Okay, my outstanding friends, this is going to be fun. <laughs> Another shocker du jour of the coral and a mouse type. It's a coral and mouse type? What, what, the guy's gone crazy? Well, maybe. <laughs> but I am going to show you, coral may not be exactly what you think it is, first of all. Secondly, these little green mice on up in Alaska are not what they think they are either. So let's go and figure this out together. It's going to be a, a fun trip, trust me. Now, th they highlighted my work on this channel here. It was mysterious discoveries made in the mountains, and it was about the mud fossils. Uh, you know, my specifically my work. That's my hands right there pointing to these mud fossils. And he... he, he, he portrays it, you know, not actually the way I would like to see it portrayed. It's more of a spectacular looking sort of thing where it doesn't have the scientific deepness that, that, that I like to do. So I am going to go in and show right now about the coral and about the green mice because he also highlighted that in here. These are things nobody can explain. Well, I can explain it. And he said, it starts off by saying, what if you realize that everything you were told was wrong? And basically it is. Everything theoretical right now is up for grabs. I would absolutely, 100% do interviews with anybody that seems to be of the, the science communicator types, and they will not respond because I have too much evidence. As I will show you, it, 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 it makes it very difficult for them to support their point of view, which right now is, is just wrong. Because <laughs> I have scientific evidence to prove my points, and, and they absolutely do not. It's strictly, this must have happened 50 million years ago, 250 million years ago, it's, it, and things are not right. And, but now at least Yale has come up with the fact that yes, Mud fossilization, 100% legitimate, no question whatsoever, soft-bodied creatures preserved in the Triassic era. No question. So they will not allow to know that they were giant creatures, giant human beings, just exactly what they said. And it was a worldwide, one huge flood worldwide, created the Triassic era, red bed, gray clay, black cap, Triassic. And in that layer is the mud fossils. And in that layer is all the dead creatures that died in these oceans. And then life started to grow on those dead creatures. And I will show you both the green mice and the coral fit that profile. Okay, bit of an interruption there, but again, origins explained, and they gave me a nice, nice uh, look up. It was, again, it wasn't exactly the way I'd like to see it, but it's starting to become, somehow you got to come out of this to where people start to look at it, and, and I thought it was very nice of them to do that. Now, th now they're going to be talking about these green mice, and I'll show you about that, because I understand exactly what they are. Once you understand mud fossils, everything be f just drops right into focus. Now listen to what they have to say. Millions of years ago, what do you think? Did the carcasses of titans and giants turn to stone, forming geological features? Could Absolutely. the proof of this be all around us without us even realizing? Let me know in the comments down below. Please respond to them, too. It, it, trust me. All right, what I'd like you to do is to come up to here and, and comment. He asked comments, who thinks that this is possible? Watch their video, and it starts right out by saying, what if everything you were taught was wrong? And here's what Roger Spur has to say, and then he wants the comments. All right, so it's Origins Explained on YouTube. Now, we're going to look into these green mice. And again, I understand exactly what they are. So here goes. Glacier mice. In the rugged Alaskan mountains, scientists made a peculiar discovery. Moss balls that seem to have a mind of... First of all, before he gets into anything, you see all these little balls? They are everywhere. And I'm not just talking about one little patch. I'm talking about literally everywhere. Now, I'm going to let them explain what they see and what they have observed, because apparently they have scientists actually trying to understand what's going on here. 
So here goes. Of their own, these fuzzy green balls resembled miniature creatures, almost begging to be adopted as a child's pet. In 2006, while hiking near Alaska's Root Glacier, which is surrounded by mountains, researcher Tim Bartholomew found something strange. Bright green balls of moss scattered across the ice. Bartholomew, a glaciologist, was puzzled by these odd glacier mice, as they were later called. They weren't attached to anything and sit. Now, they say they weren't attached to anything, but I can tell you what. You see this round central core here? That is what this biology is feeding on. It's eating this core. I'll explain this in extreme detail very shortly. And I'll explain what that core was and why they're all over the place. Simply sat on the glacier's surface, adding a splash of color to the otherwise white world. These fuzzy green balls intrigued Bartholomew and his colleagues so much that they decided to study them. Over time, they discovered that these moss balls could survive for years and even move together, almost like a herd of animals. How in the world is that possible? Well, unfortunately, the reason behind their movement remains a mystery. But that's part of the fun, don't you think? They move at a slow pace, but these moss balls somehow manage to travel in the same direction and at the same speed. It's almost like they're part of a strange coordinated dance. The term glacier mice isn't new. Back in the 1950s, an Icelandic researcher wrote about them, noting that rolling stones gather moss. These moss balls have been spotted not only in Alaska, but also in Iceland, Svalbard, and even South America. But still, not just any glacier can host them. Conditions need to be just right. Wildlife biologist Sophie Gilbert noted that their movement was especially odd. The team suspected that they might roll around like tumbleweeds, but their motion was more complicated. The moss on the bottom needs to be exposed to sunlight. I just want to show you something. Look at that moss, because I'm going to show you the same moss in a second. Meaning the balls must roll or the moss would die. They don't just tumble randomly either. These moss balls move about an inch a day in what appears to be an organized pattern. Over several years, Bartholomew and his team tracked the moss balls, hoping to figure out what was driving their movement. They ruled out wind, sunlight, and even downhill slopes. None of these seem to be the answer to this. Let me just explain something. What they're talking about is these green mice, which are growing just like leaves on a tree, and they're all moving exactly at the same speed, at the same direction, and so forth. The only thing I can take away from that is a leaves will orient themselves towards the sunlight. All right, so these balls may be just barely twisting a little bit towards the sunlight, because these guys on this side aren't getting any sun, they want sun, and, they, and it just sort of moves a little bit this way, that's all I can think, because they're all going the same direction, they go the same speed, that's the only thing I can take away from that, if that is even in fact true. It may just be the glaciation moving, and they're, it's all moving in the same way at the same time, obviously they're going to go according to the same way they just said, they're going to move the same speed, the same direction, and so, so forth. So could it be the glaciation? I don't know, I would assume they would take that into account, but who knows. The only other thing I can think of is they're twisting into the sunlight to get absorbed the sunlight to keep growing. This day, no one knows why these glacier mice move the way they do. Can you crack the mystery? I'm trying, buddy. Okay, so here's the mice. And then again, 12 most mysterious things scientists still can't explain. Virtually all of them I can explain because I understand mud fossils. Now, what's growing on here is moss, and they're growing on these, what are called, I call them interstitium balls, which is in below skin, there's all these balls that have little tiny straps on them. And you can pull this way and pull that way and the skin will come back to where the balls were originally anchored. That's why they're so fairly well distributed here. It's just nothing but skin. Up here, skin too. Look at this. Everywhere. 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 Now, I would look at these, the, the, the other rocks that are in this area because they're going to have some other biology associated to this layer of skin you know just below the skin but these balls I believe they're 
they're rotating or angling towards the sunlight. That's all I can take from it, if they are in fact moving the way they explain it. Now, let's see what these are growing on, and why would they grow on there? My claim is these are what I said, interstitium balls, and the reason the stuff is going on is a ton of biological red blood in these balls. And moss loves red blood. All right, pay close attention to these little stripes here. That's muscle banding. And you see these green spots up at the top? That's where moss is growing into this heart to get to the red blood. It loves red blood. And this was a heart at one time. It died laying flat like this on its, its side, on the back there side. But you can see the muscle stripes and banding if you know what to look for. Over in this area, you can actually see it. It's, this is extremely raw. It's turned into almost solid sandstone. But why would this be growing here? I know why. It's because that is where the plumbing was for the heart. It's exactly what it, how it works, right there at the top of the heart. I have a lot of hearts. I got a lot of heart. You see that strapping there? Hard to see, but if you get things just right in the right light, you can you can make out the patterns. And they're quite distinct. But you have to know what to look for. It's just not going to grow there for nothing. I haven't put any water on this in 10 years. It grows right out of just... And I, I'm going to show you some more growing just everywhere. And it's red blood that it loves. Lichen is the white stuff that is on rocks, very flat looking stuff. And that is, um, grows on black blood, the um, vein blood. I'll show you right now. Okay, I showed you the green glacial mice and they, I believe, are feeding off of what is around that tendon ball which is going to be some biological material, pretty much red blood, I'm sure. And moss, it, it, it's everywhere. So how did it get everywhere? It has to be somehow involved in the red blood as far as I'm concerned. Now, you see this right here? That's the structure of a heart. You take off the plumbing, and they have, this is comet, I mean, asteroid Bennu, and there's another asteroid, Psyche. They're both hearts, they're in space. They have a piece of this back here on Earth, and it's sarcomere sandwiched between two layers of membranes, and it has all of the same chemistry as blood. 1.16 billion dollars spent to do that, and I can't get through to anybody about this being a heart. It's a heart. That's all it is. It's, I know they're going to, well, I know they're having a hard time with it because I've tried everybody, but now, I told you coral may not be what you think it is. Coral looks like a whole bunch of sea creatures just growing on nothing. Well, they're growing on something, and I believe, because this was a heart. You see those strange, same thing? That's that same heart. And what's underneath that heart is the chambers of the heart right here. Those are the two, oops, the two chambers. There's still blood in there. I'll show it to you. And this is one big long rope. Hearts just make a rope structure that goes all the way around and wraps around. Uh, I think I have it shown here. I can show it somewhere. And it, it twists and pumps and sucks and pumps and sucks. That's, that's how the heart works. Now, this, uh, I thought, yeah, here it is right here. You see it? And that's this. Here's the top structure right here. Boom, boom, boom. And here's the cavities down below and the rope running between them. <laughs> now I'm going to put this in a microscope and show you the blood. It's in here. This is what it is. So my point being is this, whatever was living on this was a sea creatures, little fungus or whatever, you know, like ferns or whatever to grow out of it. And then it ate it all up and it had to leave because there's nothing left to eat. I'll put it in a microscope, you'll be able to see. This is nothing more than, than bodily tissue, and there's some little red blood left down inside the, the, the area down in here. <laughs> Let's take a look in a microscope. 
All right, remember this now. This is what a heart looks like with all of the tubing at the top removed, all of this. And it, uh, they just fall apart right from here. It just happens. There's, there's a, they're literally glued to the bottom buckets. What we're looking up above here is a little tiny heart, which is coral. Let me back up out of here a little further so we can see it from a distance. Those are those same tubes. All right, you see the four of them right here? One, you see the red blood is still in there. This is the tissue from a heart. That's what heart muscle looks like when you get down to the connective tissue. These are all the same holes that you see in that heart right there. All right, you see, the, see them right there? You see them right there? Same ones. Now, what if I turn that heart over? What would we see? Well, we should see the banding of the heart, which is what I'm going to show you right now, is this banding right here is what we should see if I turn it over. So, let me turn it over. Because don't forget, it breaks right here. Well, we were just looking down here. See these, these outlets. All right, so that's what we're looking down at the top now. Now I'm going to turn it over. Now we're at, these are the cavities. You see, look, at there's still all red blood in here, which has hardened up and turned like, almost like crystal, you know, red crystals. And that's all inside of these, the chambers of this heart, you see it? Let me turn up the lights a little bit. You see down in there? I don't think that's too hard to understand. That's the, this is the actual heart muscle band that wraps around. It wraps around, 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 and, and that's what twists and forces the blood up through these holes and then out to wherever they're going. Everything goes through your heart, the veins, the arteries, and there's another yellowish substance, and I believe it's some related to the lymph. Uh, but this is, that is the tissue that is the, the structural tissue of heart muscle. So, as far as I'm concerned, coral, this particular piece of coral, in my opinion, there's no question whatsoever it's a heart. And it is no question whatsoever, there's nothing living in here now. And I don't see any dead stuff. So whatever was here, left, as far as I can tell. You know, they're going to eat everything and then they're going to move on. <laughs> It's just the way life is. You eat what you can get and then you go to the next place. All right, so I guess I'll leave it at that for now. But that's, that's the muscle, which is that muscle right there. And I believe we're looking at that crossover right there. That's all I can say.